Hey, this is uh, Jason with uh, Day Train Fearless. Um, this is for uh, members or potential members who are looking to uh, trade our weekly trade zones. Um, I'm actually going to go over how to actually trade our trade zones, um, the best way to do it, and also what everything is step by step uh, very quickly for you. So if you're a new member or if you're a potential member, hopefully this will help you to understand what the weekly trade zones are exactly. So first off, we have, as you can see, the ES is up here. And we have the uh, rectangles, okay, which are uh, the red zones right here are going to be the resistance zones and the green zones are going to be support zones. Think of this as more of a contrarian type of trade. Okay, so as price rises, what we're going to do is we're going to look to short the red zones, okay, look to get short as price rises up to the red zones and we're going to get long as price comes down to the green zones, okay, so these are going to be buy points, these are going to be short points. Now, with that said, we also have uh, gaps in naked VPOCs. Uh, the VPOC is a naked VPOC. So something like here, um, what we have is a zone with a VPOC, okay? And what that is, is the naked VPOC is market profile where the point of control has not been touched yet from the previous day. Well, that might take days or even weeks for something like that to ever happen. Um, meaning if maybe there was a VPOC, uh, uh, point of control on Tuesday we gap higher on Wednesday okay so that on Wednesday we never came down to retest it well Thursday Friday Saturday price might keep going higher okay like it did here price closed right we gap higher and then as price comes down, we never come down to retouch it. Well, I mark those off on my charts as a naked VPOC to remind me it's kind of like, hey, if price comes back down to this level, this is going to be uh, more than likely a support level. Same with the gap, okay? Um, price gaps up. Let's say price closes at 4.15. Eastern time on Monday at we'll say uh, 2536 and a quarter we gap up okay and the market opens at 2540 we never come back down to retest that um, and that is going to be an open gap now once these get touched the very first time they get touched or come within maybe a couple ticks of one or two ticks then they are removed from the chart they are no longer valid okay second is with the zones the way and let me zoom into a couple of these zones right so let's say price starts to rally and we come into this resistant zone okay the zones are two points wide so this zone is 2561 to 2563 okay it's a two point zone the way i like to trade it and there are multiple ways you could trade it but this is what i personally like to do is i like to look at a 512 tick chart i like to see divergence okay so as price is starting to rally up into the zone okay what I'll do is I'll go to maybe a 512 tick chart, okay? And with the 512 tick chart, I'll actually add um, my, like a RSI or for a, a RVI relative strength. And I'll look for um, divergence as we're coming up into the zone. So let's just say, for example, there's a zone right here and let me draw something real quick right let's say this is the zone right so as we're as we're coming up into the zone maybe i'll look for a divergence like this right so price rallies we make a high 
um, and then we kind of bounce and then we make a lower high so we actually have a divergence here right then I'll look to that's usually where I'll look to get short on the zone if that makes sense okay so let me remove all this real quick and those are sometimes your best bet uh, meaning those are going to be the best uh, kind of trade setup oops Oh, okay, so those are going to be the best trade setup for the zone, right? So, so if there was a zone here and there was divergent on the very first one or the second, maybe I'll look to get short. Remember, there are two point zones. What I'll do is I'll put my order in somewhere around here, okay? And then I always give a one point to the back of the zone as kind of a shakeout uh, move. Um, sometimes it'll go up. By one or two ticks and then reverse if it goes more than a point beyond my zone I usually don't want to be in it because price is now respecting the zone level which is a major level based on multiple things such as um, Fibonacci's uh, market profile and also um, previous swing highs and lows so it's a, it kind of a mix of certain things and there are some that I use some that I won't use it's just knowing how these markets work okay so again to kind of recap as price starts to rise look at the 512 tick chart for divergent to be able to do so uh, to enter the trade that's one way the second way of trading the zones is what I like to do is maybe put order to get long here or sorry to go short okay or here we'll say to get long here okay we'll use this zone as price comes down okay what I'll do is I'll have an order pending here to get long okay my stop is going to be three points wide on the first order what I'm looking for is price to come down, come in, and then bounce, okay? Pick me up, fall, pick me up, find support, and bounce. And maybe I'll look for a point, two points worth of, uh, uh, for the trade, okay? there It's kind of a scalping so-called technique. Another way is, a, is I'll put a second pending order here. So I have one order here another order here and then a third order at the back of the zone because sometimes price will come down and go like this right and fall right through buy me here buy me here and then reverse and bounce well by the time we get back here i'm actually up because i'm break even here on plus one point here and then i could start to scale out the position or i look for price to come all the way down get all three buys right long 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 and then start to scale my way out of the trade and again my exit is going to be one point for all three of these now if i do a trade like this where i get long one two and three okay um and then i get stopped out well the first trade i'm risking 150 the second trade i'm risking 100 and the third trade i'm risking 50 so that comes out to about 300 dollars total risk on the trade okay but if you think about it if i could if it picks me up and then we bounce and we get a nice five six point bounce i could start scaling out and then leave the third one as a runner and maybe move my stop all the way up to break even start to trail my stop um to lock in all my profits okay now another thing if you don't want to trade the e-minis okay s p you can always trade uh just the spy okay you could trade options on this as price starts to fall down you're in the zone you could go buy maybe a weekly option 
um, and then let price kind of work itself around or even the Nadex option if you trade Nadex right just to use the Nadex options the daily options on Nadex and it gives you all day with very minimal risk and you don't have to worry about being stopped out so that's another way of trading because sometimes price will go down beyond it by a couple points and then later on during the day maybe reverse and what would have been a stop out with nadex or an option could become a winner again but remember it's about defining your trade um and your trade rules and your trade plans now with the gaps and VPOX, the way I like to trade it is is price falls down. Usually if I have a double, maybe I'll get long here or look for price to come in, in between them because I know I might take a little heat. Okay, and just to let price work itself out. Very rarely does price ever just blow right through. Okay a uh, gap or a VPOC and then keep on going. That's on the trend day. Very rare. We kind of really haven't seen these type of trend days for a, a long time in this market because we're in such a strong bull market. But these are going to be great support and resistant uh, levels as price if there's a gap above us look to get short and a lot of times you'll want to front run it by maybe a, a penny if it's only a gap or sorry a tick if it's like one gap or a one um gap or whatever just to get short one tick or two ticks before and just look for maybe a couple ticks or that's it that's all i look for on these type of trades remember they are weekly zones they are bigger levels um but most importantly these are just we're contrarian traders so unless you think hey we're in a major reverse i'm only looking for quick scalp trades but remember all it takes is one or two trades and then you could scale up instead of doing one contract you do two three four contracts so i hope this video has helped you uh this is how to trade the weekly trade zones oh one last thing is once a zone has been touched okay that zone is no longer valid for the entire week now sometimes price will keep bouncing up and go here fall and keep finding support or resistance at these levels but in my rule book now i personally trade once it's been touched I no longer trade it and you have to take the first trade now are they all gonna work no they're not all gonna work but about 90 plus percent of the time they work especially overnight these are valid intraday and overnight now if a zone's been hit overnight then I'll I and then inter it falls apart right so let's say at 12 or 2 a.m we hit we pull back and then the regular trading hour opens and we start to rally then i'll probably trade it because that high is a overnight high and usually i'll probably trade that but if it just keeps saying oh throughout the week i won't touch it um won't take the trade and usually what i do is once a zone has been t touched i'll just erase the line the day it has been touched so i no longer have to see it and um it, it won't get me in trouble so again um hopefully this helps of how our weekly trade zones work um they are posted every evening by sunday uh 6 p.m uh market open eastern time so but usually i do it way before usually a uh, friday right after the market or on saturdays um you can log into your account if you have if you're a member if you're not a member make sure you check us out at daytrainfearless.com uh, uh, you could sign up for a member, see exactly what everything is. And um, if you ever have any questions, send me an email, jason at daytrainfearless. Thank you. Or sorry, jason at daytrainfearless.com.